Brahma said, O sage, when Shiva vanished after granting her the boons, Sandhya too went to the place where Medhatiti was performing sacrifice. She entered the sacrificial hall without being observed by anyone thanks to Shiva's favor. She recalled to her memory the Brahmana boy who had instructed her in the procedure of penance. O great sage, at the bidding of Brahma, Vasishta had assumed the guise of a Brahmana boy and instructed her in the rites of penance. Meditating on that Brahmacharin, her tutor in the mode of austerities, Sandhya thought of him as her future husband and entered the blazing sacrificial fire unobserved by the sages. She was delighted that it was by Shiva's favor that she could enter the sacrificial fire. Her body itself had become sacrificial offering in that sacrifice. When it was burnt, it could not be distinguished from the ordinary Purodasa, since it too had the same fragrance. At the bidding of Shiva, the god of fire sent forth her body to the pure zone of the sun. The sun severed her body into two halves and placed the same on his own chariot for the propitiation of the Pitris and Devas. O great sage, the upper half of her body became the Pratasandhya, dawn, which is at the beginning or in the middle of a day and night. The lower half of her body became the Sandhya, dusk, which is in the middle of a day and night. The period is always pleasing to the mains. Before sunrise, when the day breaks, the period is called Pratasandhya. It delights the gods. When the sun has set and assumed the hue of a red lotus, the period of Sayang Sandhya sets in. It is delightful to the mains. Shiva, the merciful, created embodied beings with their vital airs, mind, and the divine body. At the end of the sacrifice, the sage found his daughter in the sacrificial pit shining lustrously like heated gold. With very great delight, the sage took up the daughter, O sage, as though she were a sacrificial article. He bathed her and kept her on his lap. The great sage gave her the name Arundhati. Surrounded by his disciples, he celebrated the event joyously. Arundhati means one who does not hinder sacred rites in any manner whatsoever. She acquired this name, which later on became well known in the three worlds. O Celestial Sage, that sage concluded the sacrifice with great contentment and was delighted at the acquisition of a daughter. He spent his days in the same hermitage along with his disciples, tending the daughter mercifully. The Divine Lady grew up in the hermitage Tapasaranya, on the banks of the river Chandrabhaga. When she reached her fifth year, the chaste lady sanctified the environs of the Tapasaranya and the river Chandrabhaga by virtue of her good qualities. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva got her marriage celebrated with Vasishta, the son of Brahma. O sage, great festivities in the marriage ceremony increased happiness. The sages and gods were very happy on that account. From the water flowing from the hands of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, the seven holy rivers, Shipra and others, rose and flowed. O sage, Arundhati, the daughter of Medatiti, the greatest of all chaste ladies, shone all the more on attaining Vasishta. O excellent sage, she secured Vasishta and bore one hundred auspicious sons. O oh, excellent sage, I have narrated to you the story of Sandhya. It is holy, sanctifying, divine, and bestower of all benefits. He or she who hears this story, accompanied by auspicious rites, attains all cherished desires. There is no doubt about it.